Hello, everybody. It's Diana at I am going live for migraines. This is my going live for migraines Facebook Live. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome, welcome, welcome. So today I'm going to talk about one of our favorite topics. Yep, I'm today I'm going to talk about food. Don't we all love to talk about food? I know I love to talk about food, but we're going to talk about food in relationship to migraines. So it's going to be really fun. And I'm excited to share this with you because many of you know my story and some of you don't know my story. But for those of you who don't know my story, I can tell you what happened with me and food because I had every possible trigger you can imagine. Everything triggered me from migraines. <laughs> oh, it's kind of sad. But definitely cheese, chocolate, wine, and definitely um, smells, chemical smells could trigger me perfumes, gasoline, those alcohol smells, and also a heavy saturated fat meal. So I, I have the triggers that we're going to talk about today, and I would get a migraine from most all of those. And I, I quit drinking wine, actually, uh, three years before I got better because it triggered me so severely for a migraine. I always knew if I had one glass of wine, boom, I'm done. I got a migraine. So I just stopped drinking it. And I don't want you to have to give up your favorite foods and your trigger foods, because actually what I can do is I can teach you why foods are triggering migraines, how to stop those foods from triggering migraines. That's right. And I can teach you, uh, you know, how to stop migraines altogether through lots of these videos and different products that I have available for you. Now, I want everyone here to know that I am here to support the migraine community. And we're not alone, okay? You're not alone. If you have migraines, you're one of a large group, okay? There are a billion of us. And I say us because I was a migrainer. Um, and so there was a billion of, there's a billion of us. And we can stick together and support each other and know that there's going to be one less migraine person all the time because they keep getting well. And I'm working with people all the time who are getting well, that have control of their migraines, who can stop a migraine when they get one, or who can st stop one before it starts and even know the lifestyle changes they need. So we don't always um, have my, the, the, what I want to give you is this hope, this hope to know that, hey, guess what? You are not stuck with migraines all your life. Just because, you know, I have clients right now who've had migraines for 40 years and they're getting better now. I had the acute client the other day. She is actually 80 years old and we had our first phone call. And after one phone call, she called me the next day. She's like, oh my gosh, I stole my migraine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She's 80 years old. She's been having migraines most of her entire life. So you don't ever have to give up hope. So there's one billion of us strong and I'm here to support every one of you, one billion of you to help you to stop having migraines. So let's stick together. Now, I, like I said, I have all these online products that you can um, check out. I have a YouTube channel. I have these Facebook groups here. I have Facebook Live and I have a website, a blog site. I mean, I am just trying to get that information out there that it is possible for you to completely get well from migraines or have migraines completely under your control through your lifestyle and through knowing some of the things I'm going to share with you. All right. So please chime in. Please tell me who's here. Hi, Sherry. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. Who else is here? Let's say hi to each other. We're a community. This beautiful, gorgeous migraine community. And by the way, I just, I'm going to eventually get to talk to everyone about the spiritual side of migraines because every trial that we go through in life, I believe has a purpose, has, it's a teacher for us, right? And it's teaching us something that we need to know or do or be. Hello, Christina. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate you being here. And so, and hello, Rebecca. Hi, Narada. Oh man, there's more chiming in. I love it. Yay. Thank you everybody for being here. And so every trial we go through has this teach is a teacher for us. So in other um, Facebook lives, I'm going to be talking about this journey that we're on together, this migraine journey and what we're all learning uh, um, for our, our spirit to grow and for our 
our in our path so that we can get where we're supposed to go in this life. Okay, so I'm going to jump right in. We're talking again about one of our favorite topics, food. And for those of you who are triggered by food, we are going to talk about why some foods trigger migraines and then what are the most likely foods that trigger migraines and how to heal the body so that you're no longer triggered by migraines. There's no reason really why you have to be triggered by um, food and get migraines because if you heal the body, it's done. Like right now, like I said, I, I couldn't drink wine and I wasn't able to have heavy meals and cheese, but now I could have everything a lot. <laughs> No, food is is not a, a trigger for me anymore, nor chemical smells, nor um, perfumes and um, things like gasoline. Those things used to always trigger my migraines. Not anymore. I just, nothing triggers a migraine for me. So especially not food. And that's what I want to make sure you know is why is food triggering us and how do we mitigate for that so that it doesn't happen anymore. All right, so I'm going to jump right in. And for those of you who missed my story, I said it at the very beginning, I started a little bit early. But basically, um, the main part about my story is that I used to be triggered by these things, and now I'm not. So we talked about that a little bit at the very beginning. Okay, so the main food triggers that a lot of people are experiencing are wine. It's one of the number one triggers for a migraine. So we'll talk about that. Wine, cheese is a big one. Darn it because we all love cheese. Chocolate is a big one. Who doesn't love chocolate? I mean, there's a couple people, but not very many. I love chocolate, by the way. <laughs> and chemical smells, caffeine church can trigger uh, migraine for some people. Um, there's, let's see, I have a little list here. Let me use my cheat sheet. Um, MSG. Yeah. And there's a lot of reasons why MSG will trigger migraines. There's like three different reasons why it will trigger migraines. Cured meats, which have some similarities to MSG, pickled and fermented foods, frozen foods. I'm going to give you guys a big tip on why frozen foods can cause even just an ice cream headache and processed or salty foods. Okay. So, um, and also I, I don't think I put in there heavy meals, like um, something that is heavy in fats or greasy, like a, you know, burgers and fries, lamb, sometimes that can trigger a migraine for some people. So we'll talk about these. Uh, first of all, some of these foods dehydrate the body. So that's, let's talk about that number one. Wine, it does two things that trigger a migraine. One is that wine dehydrates your body because your liver is having to process that those you know toxins through the liver. And when it's processing the toxins, it's busy doing other things. So it's not protecting the brain, but it's also flushing out a lot of your hydration and minerals to process that those toxins, any toxin. If anytime you're exposed to a toxin, and alcohol is a toxin, anytime you're exposed to that, you your body needs extra hydration in order to get flush that out of the body. So whether the toxin is mold or um, asbestos, or hair products, you know, like say you're getting your a perm or a hair dye, anything that we're exposed to, they dehydrate the body. Now, for people with migraines, they're usually on this very fine line of being very dehydrated. So if this is hydrated, and this is the fine line of, uh-oh, I'm almost severely dehydrated, migraineers stay at this line, and then they dip down, and they're like, you know, often a, a little something like wine or chemicals can just dehydrate them over the top. But we just don't have enough hydration because there's something going on in the body. It could be, you know, there's, we won't talk about that right now, but something like liver issues, blood issues, or mineral issues that are keeping in a dehydrated state. So a lot of things trigger dehydration. Cheese triggers dehydration because it's so thick that it takes extra hydration to get it through the system. Same with heavy meals, the same with chocolate bars. So what I want you guys to picture is picture that you are taking that food and pour, putting it in the drain, and then you want it to go down the drain. How much hot water would it take to completely flush a chocolate bar down the drain? How much hot water would that take? Picture it in your mind. 
That's a lot of hot water to get a whole chocolate bar down the drain, right? How about a cup of, or say two tablespoons of coconut oil or say two tablespoons of cheese? How much, how much water do you have to flush that down to get that to go all the way down the drain and not clog up the drain? Lamb, put French fries and hamburgers in there and grease, okay? And so the same things with our body. In order to process anything, we need enough water to run it through the pipes, so to speak. Now, if you have a smoothie, you know, it's just going to go right down the drain, right? It's You don't have to have a ton of water to get a smoothie down the drain or to get uh, juice down the drain or water. It just blows right down the drain, so you don't need extra hydration. But for these thick meals, they can really dehydrate the body. So that's one of the problems. And wine is has another problem. It's also taxing your liver. And for people with migraines, a lot of times your liver's already taxed, and that's why it's not pushing up more glucose and more minerals to the brain because it's already sluggish and, and struggling. So you add wine into the mix and you've just really taxed the liver and then it can't clean the blood well. And then you're not getting enough nutrients to the brain overnight. Okay, so that's a whole lot of information on hydration. <laughs> Hopefully you guys aren't just like, what did she just say about hydration? The main thing is <laughs> if you are eating some food Think about how much, how hard it will be to get that food down the drain and drink a lot of water if it's going to be hard to get it down the drain. But if it's hard on the liver, like wine, yeah, it's just going to be too hard on the liver. So just avoid all these foods or really super, 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 super hydrate. And that will help you not get a migraine right now. And lastly, will heal the body, will heal the liver, the blood vessels, and the minerals so that then you'll be well and you won't have to worry about it. Okay, I want you guys to chime in and tell me what things trigger your migraines, what foods, chemicals, or um, smells, or um, just anything that might be external that triggers a migraine that's not internal. Just give me some of your ideas and then we'll see why that thing triggers migraines. Now, Rebecca mentioned caffeine. Okay, so caffeine has two kind of um, issues because caffeine is, is a di diuretic, and so it does dehydrate the body, but it also expands the blood vessels. So some people are dehydrated already, but it helps them get rid of a headache because it expands the blood vessels, and that helps promote more circulation to the head. So so caffeine has to be carefully used. I mean, you want to stay very hydrated if you're using caffeine and you want to definitely not abuse caffeine. Caffeine, ideally, uh, coffee um, has some of the best benefits of caffeine. Energy drinks, they're just plain out horrible for you. Not just because the caffeine is extracted drug that's been put in there to hype up your brain, but there's all kinds of other bad things in energy drinks that really should not be consumed. So we're going to take energy drinks off the table, okay? But for coffee drinkers, there's some uh, healthy properties in coffee that can be beneficial to people in the morning. Okay, so coffee is not something you should drink all day long. It's a, something that is for the morning. And for those who um, are trying to get off sumatriptan or some of those other drugs, sometimes coffee can be used to help expand the blood vessels to try to get rid of migraines while you're healing your body. Healing the body takes time, um, months to a year. And so it's, it's best to just use that in moderation if you have to use coffee. Okay, I hope I'm making sense because I'm really trying to give you guys so much information, but I'm, I hope I'm making sense. So we talked about dehydration, okay? Now let's talk about, um, let's see. You guys have any questions? Because I want to, the reason these foods are making you dehydrated or the reason they're giving you migraines is one, dehydration, two, sticky blood. So when you eat something like cheese and oil and things that are not, and they're not hydrating you very well, your blood gets both sticky and it gets what they call thick, okay? Now, keep in mind, every blood cell in your body 
has to go into a capillary. Capillaries are long, skinny, and the blood cells are big and round, and the blood cells have to squeeze in there, okay? They squeeze in, and as they squeeze into the capillary, they release the nutrients. Nutrients goes out of the blood into the capillary bed, and then they withdraw the waste. Okay, so they squeeze in there. When your blood is thick and is sticky and gooey, it doesn't go into the capillaries very well. So it's it's all clumped together and it won't fit into the capillaries. So you get very poor delivery of nutrients. And so that hurts every part of your entire body, but your head really screams about this. The head gets the most upset about, you know, you'll feel tired, you'll feel sluggish, you'll feel like, oh, I had a heavy meal, I'm sort of fatigued. But you if you're dehydrated already or you're a migrainer, you could end up with a migraine from that sticky blood because it's just not delivering the oxygen, hydration, glucose, and minerals into your cells and your important brain, right? We need those things. So that's another thing. And then the another problem with eating the wrong foods like um, wine and pickled foods, MSG, cured meats, these things will flush out minerals out of the body. So if you get a high sodium message from the body that is not in proportion to other minerals, one of the things the body has to do is flush out all that fake sodium, the, the kind that's not good for you. So MSG is a fake sodium. It's not even, it's not even sodium really. I mean, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a chemical sodium. We don't want that in our body, monosodium mono glutamate. And the body has to flush and flush and flush. And what goes out with all that flushing and all that diuretic effect is minerals. So when we eat cured meats, MSG, and, um, and a lot of heavy, heavy foods, we're losing minerals. And that's one of the things that can make us low in minerals over time is just a really poor diet. Okay, now I'm going to get to tell you something really fun. Okay, no more comments? No more comments? Okay, if you guys don't have any more comments, I'll just keep going. But I'd love to hear from you. Now, everyone's going to love this. Ice cream headache. What causes an ice cream headache? Okay, any guesses? Okay, why would eating ice cream or something super cold cause us to have this pain right here in our head? Any guesses? Because I'll take guesses. And if you don't have a guess, this one's really fun. Okay, so the roof of your mouth, okay, has all these blood vessels right up there. And those blood vessels actually um, are, there's a very thin, thin layer between the roof of your mouth and your sinuses. And when you eat something too, if you eat a lot of cold, if it's too much, your blood vessels will do a reaction and they'll constrict really hard. And they not only constrict on the roof of your mouth, they constrict in your sinuses. And you're gonna feel an ice cream headache right here where all these blood vessels just kind of go from all that cold. And so that there's, there's a, a little science for you <laughs> why you get an ice cream headache. So all you have to do is make sure between bites, just warm up the roof of your mouth. Don't let the roof of your mouth get too cold and you won't get an ice cream headache. But that's not really a migraine. It can just trigger a migraine for people who are already really susceptible to that, that kind of head pain and those constrictions. So what you want are foods that promote good blood flow. And all of these foods that we talked about that cause migraines, they actually inhibit blood flow to your head. And that's not what we want. Now, if you have plenty of hydration and you have enough minerals and you have good blood flow, hey, no problem. You know, eat a good diet and it can include cheese and chocolate and those kind of things in moderation and in a healthy, balanced form, right, with plenty of fruits and vegetables. But if you're having migraines, then you just want to really minimize these foods. What I recommend is no wine, no alcohol of any kind until you stop having migraines, which could be months. It could be a year. Depends on your liver. And then I recommend no more than one meal, one serving of saturated fats per day. Limit your saturated fats because they're very dehydrating. Now we do need saturated fats, especially healthy ones. Now I'm not saying limit avocados. You can eat as many avocados as you want. 
they actually don't thicken the blood. Eat some, eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, but heavy, heavy meals um, that are lots of cheese, just really minimize that. Peanut butter, those things that are hard to get down the drain, minimize those um, to one serving a day until your headaches are under control. And then um, let's see, definitely high, you know, increase your hydration and increase your minerals so that you have more and more hydration. And, and remember, if you have migraines and you haven't been following me, you might not um, know yet that I only recommend that you have lots of minerals to keep you hydrated because drinking plenty of water without minerals is really not going to necessarily hydrate you because most people with migraines are really low in minerals, especially magnesium, but all minerals, magnesium just being one of the major ones they are super low in. So increase your minerals and you can do that by putting Himalayan sea salt in your water and on your food. You can do that by ordering colloidal minerals online and adding that to your water. Those are all really good options. Eating lots and lots of fruits and vegetables. They are high in, they're the highest in minerals of all the foods. And um, there's certain root vegetables that have a whole bunch of minerals for us, okay? So eat a good diet. And let's see, and then the last thing that really dehydrates us and really hurts our um, self or migraines is medication, which is a sensitive topic. You know, some people need certain kinds of medication. And um, I would say consult with your doctor for sure, but avoid the medication you don't have to take, which is usually like pain medication, ibuprofen, Tylenol, or decongestants, allergy medications, and histamines, if you can avoid it. You can, you know, try to avoid all of those kind of medications, all the over-counter the medic all the over the counter medications. And then talk to your doctor about minimizing your medications because they are very dehydrating. They thicken the blood, uh, a lot of them, and they increase our risks of migraines. A lot of the medications do. Okay. So I want questions. Any questions on what causes your food triggers um, or what, what are your food triggers? What causes them to cause migraines? <laughs> I'm just, 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 uh, a little bit discombobulated there for a minute, sorry. And um, so if you have any questions, please type them up. Now, below this video, I'm gonna have a post on what to eat if you have migraines. I have a whole list of the foods that thicken your blood and the foods that thin your blood. So you can go, oh, okay, I'm gonna, instead of choosing, you know, while I'm having migraines, instead of choosing kale, um, I'm gonna choose broccoli, or I'm gonna choose a food that just isn't quite as blood thickening now. I'm not going to suggest, you know, kale's not a bad food. It just it is very high in vitamin K and it does thicken your blood. But there are so many foods that you can eat that are not blood thickening, like berries and fruits and avocados. And there's wonderful, wonderful foods that are good for you. And when you go for oils, you can go for an oil that stays liquid at room temperature, like avocado oil, and avoid the oils like butter, and coconut oil that get thick at room temperature because they're a little bit harder to push through the body. Okay, so look for that blog article below this post, below this video. And then I'll also put a YouTube video that I have on here that tells you about eating the right foods and how to avoid migraines and food triggers. All right, so I think I finished up kind of early today, yeah. I did pretty good, huh? 20 minutes. So any questions? Um, any questions from any of our lovely ladies? Um, constrict, constricted blood vessels. Um, yes, that would be from the ice cream headache, constricted blood vessels. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm, any, other, any other part of that question, Sherry, uh, regarding constricted blood vessels? Like if you eat a, ice cream, that's where these blood vessels constrict and the ones in your head constrict. So um, yeah, that's why I don't recommend using ice with a migraine. I mean, some people use ice on their pain and I've done, I used to do that too. I understand it takes away some of the pain, but it does constrict the blood vessels when it's very cold, you know, using something like ice. 
And we really want to promote circulation to the head, even though that seems counterintuitive because the blood vessels are swollen and that's causing this pain. But the reason that the blood vessels are swollen is because they want more nutrients and they need more blood and they're like calling for it. So they swell up. It's the body knowing what it needs to do to help us. So we don't want to constrict the blood vessels when we have a migraine. Oh yes, she was commenting on ice cream headache. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I feel a little bit out of sorts today. Um, just, I think the time change, you know, has anyone felt really weird from the time change? Now in Hawaii here, we didn't do the time change, but it threw me off because everyone else in the world does this daylight savings. And so now my time and your time are all messed up and that can be really discombobulating. But, um, but I feel great. And that's what matters, right? Is that, you know, that we can roll with these punches and, and feel really good. And eventually, you know, just um, not have migraines and eat what we want and feel strong and healthy. That's what I want for all of you. So to wrap up, I just really appreciate everyone being here today. Um, even with the time change, I and mean, we might have lost a few people because of the time change, but I really appreciate everyone being here. I'm here to support the migraine community. Like I said at the beginning, there's 1 billion of us, and I, I've been a migrainer, so I consider myself part of that community, and I'm here to support all of you with all of the things I do online. So reach out to me. You can, you know, reach out to me on Messenger, and you can send me a Facebook message in different ways, um, and join my Facebook group, you know, check out my YouTube channel, and I'd love to hear from you. I'm here to support you. So have a fabulous day, and we'll see you next week for going live for migraines, and um, I'm happy to be here. I'm really enjoying Facebook Live, so thanks to all of you for joining in. Oh, and we have Ronnie here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining us, Ronnie. Thank you for everybody coming and have a beautiful, beautiful day. Bye.